One of the biggest updates to UEFN is finally here, Scene Graph. Scene Graphs are the future when it comes to UEFN. You will need to understand it. Now, you're probably wondering what a Scene Graph even is. Here's what Epic said anyways. A scene Graph is a unified structure that connects all objects in the world. Okay, uh, still a bit confused? Uh, it allows you to make custom entities for a scene, then assign physical components, like a wall or light, or logical components, like a gameplay tag or some verse code, to that entity, in combination with more entities, to create child prefabs which then make a custom prefab entity that you can make instances of and override components and entities of those instances individually and the crazy bit you can make as many instances as you want without using up as much memory as you normally would by a lot still confused simply speaking you can make custom prefabs not simply speaking you can pretty much do anything with this okay one thing i need to let you know scene graph is experimental right now you cannot publish any island with it enabled you just remember all of these issues currently exist if you're watching this as it's uploaded they keep it simple we're not going over any verse in this video we're simply just going over the basics of what you can do with it without getting too technical also credit devices will be coming to this in some time next year which is pretty crazy but let's just get started all right first things first to get started with scene graph you need to go open the project project settings and right here in experimental access you want to enable the scene graph system now once you have scene graph enabled the next step is to make an entity what you can do is go into your cotton browser right click and then add a folder for maybe let's call stuff then what you want to do is right click go into entity prefab definition and entity prefabs and normal entities are very different okay one is a prefab one is an entity okay so if you want to hear i'm going to call this uh i'm going to make a cube thing and now once you made it click inside of it and now you are greeted this place now up, up up at the top here this is your prefab outliner and then down here is all your details with your component Components. Now, uh, you can't really see anything because there's nothing. What we need to do is we need to add a component. So if you click on this and then component, as you can see, there is quite a few. We're just going to add a mesh. Now, would you look at that? We now have a mesh. Let's move this up a little bit. There we go. This is our mesh. Now, every single component usually comes with a transform component if it's physical, like, like a mesh or like a light or something, because that transform component is going to tell us where it is in the, in the prefab entity. We now have this cube. What we can also do is we can right click this we can add entity and we can make a new entity and that'll, that'll make uh, a new child entity of this uh cube we go into here now as you can see we have kind of the same options but it's slightly different so uh what we could do we can add a compo another component to this one now with, with this selected and we can add i don't know another mesh and now we have two meshes what we can do with this mesh is um make it a different we'll make it a cone now we have some weird looking spiky cube Okay, now this works kind of like child actors in uh, regular UEFN, where if you um, move the default cube, the bottom one, the cone will move with it. But if you only move this, um, since it's a child, it'll only move relative to this. And let's say if you place it there, then we start moving the cube. It'll now move relative to where it is with the cube. You can even rotate it too if you want. But I'm just going to put it back to where it should be. Now, let's add some cooler things. But I'm going to add this uh, cone. Right click it. We can add a new entity underneath. Then we're going to add a light to this in the point light component. Now we can drag it up. Oh, do you look at that? We now have a light. You can change all of this if you want. Uh, I'm just going to keep the same. And boom, here is our amazing build. Now, how do we actually use that? What we can do in our cotton drawer, we now have our little entity. Let's drag it out. And as you can see, nothing happened. Why? It's because you need to go and save it. You need to save it first. Once you save it, boom, there we go. All right, so here is our weird looking thing. Now, just to let you know, any mesh you use can only, you need to have a custom mesh right now, uh, or any of these like preset meshes that are in the game. Uh, any like Fortnite builds or something like that uh, doesn't work right now. What you could do is you get all the fortnite builds models from like fortnite porting or something and port them in right now but i don't know it's so it's still it's still experimental so uh yeah that's just one of the things okay now to help out with that uh, seeing this uh, we just dock up more the details down here because you need to see the outliner as you can see this is the exact same thing we had in here but it's uh in the outliner now so as you can see we can, we can now pick all of our different things like we did before wow would you look at that okay um so let's say if i grab uh, another cube out of the thing boom there we go by the way this would work if you just hold alt and drag or duplicate it but um it's kind of bugged right now so the only way you can do it is if you drag it out again from the cotton drawer so uh yeah so this just, just keep that in mind but uh, you could you could do that if, if you wanted to okay so this is important um all of these uh, are default so if i go into cube and let's say if i wanted to change a few things if i wanted let's say move let's say this 
this this triangle like a bit inside let's see if i want to do this for some reason as you can see it hasn't updated yet but if i were to save it it's now gonna update for every single uh thing so it updates everything now if i go back if i just fix it for a second as you can see it's not fixed but now let's say if i were to do something like this where if i change the color of the light if i change the green as you can see everything will turn green but let's say if i went into one of these lights in this cube or entity right here into the light and then i changed it to red what i'm doing now is i'm overriding it you can see the override with this little like blue dot that means something has been overridden and I've just overridden the, the light color. So now, if I were to go to cube and I were to change the light color again, it may be yellow. As you can see, the red will stay the same, but the other two other greens will change. That's because the greens ones were inheriting from this thing, this prefab. While this middle one, I have overridden and it doesn't inherit anymore from the light color. It has its own unique value. This is very useful by uh, placing out a bunch. Remember, you can do this, but it doesn't work. Because look, okay, I'm gonna just show you why it doesn't work. Uh, if I just delete this, can we have our two little things right here? If I go in the cube, uh, do, do let's say it's, it's not gonna be blue. As you're gonna see, it's not gonna change. It's now still yellow. It hasn't updated because I, I, I duplicated it. Now, that's a bug, okay? That's not supposed to happen. What's supposed to happen is this gonna turn blue, if that makes sense, but it doesn't. So it's just a bug, okay? This is experimental. But, anyways, so as you can see, you can now override things. Now, also inside of um, our components, what we can also do is if you see this little button up here what you can do is you can you can override the component clear the override and also remove the component if you want to so that's just useful for now also what you can do is in any of these and any duplicates you can you can just if you wanted to you could just delete it so now that's deleted and if i were to save it it wouldn't go back because now i've overridden the fact that that even existed now this is cool with these little cube things but i'm gonna try and get buildings okay i just imported a bunch of uh viking things i got from the from the, from the, from the marketplace so I'm gonna build a little house inside of the scene room. The Viking stuff is all free, by the way. You can actually get it right now for free if you wanted to. So I'm gonna call this a uh, house. Okay, so uh, to make a house, what we need to do is we need to add an entity to this. Then we're gonna add a mesh, and this will be our floor. We now have a floor. This is gonna be a tiny little house. I don't really care. On this entity, I'm gonna add another entity to it, and this will be another mesh, and it's gonna be a wall. Boom. <laughs> There's a beautiful wall. Okay, next I want a window. It's gonna be our nice little window for our little little humble abode. You can't actually use grid snap on inside the prefab editor yet. It is going to be coming though. This will be another window. Then we're gonna add a door. Would you look at that? A beautiful door. And there we go. I think our door is now on. There's a few holes, but um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I guess we'll make a roof. Let's add a roof. Boom. Now here is our house somewhat done. And let's add a few more things. Uh, also, fun fact, if you select them and press F2, you can now rename it. So this will be roof. This will be door. Boom. How do you look at that? Now but nice and organized. Now our house is looking great right now. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little sub entity to a normal entity. So in the door, I'm gonna add a new entity to that door. And then in that, I'm going to add a mesh. And then I'm gonna make it a, a beam. Here we are, beam. I'm gonna put these on the corner of the door. We now have beams. I think we're getting somewhere, but it's not done yet. Now in here, um, let's add some furniture. After all, why not? Why shouldn't I? So I'll add an entity uh to this floor this time um it doesn't have to be the floor but i'm going to do the floor because it you know makes no sense for um like a branching thing uh we're gonna add a mesh obviously and i think i'm gonna add a bed a bed will be probably what we want look at that we got a beautiful bed here is our beautiful bed uh what we can also do is get another entity to this um i don't know barrel i think there's barrels i saw barrels earlier and here's our barrel in the corner right over here there we go now what do you also want to do i'm gonna add a torch uh, to maybe the back wall. So I'm gonna go to the back wall, add an entity. I want it's gonna be called torch. I'm gonna add two of these. Okay, now in these torches, what we can do is got another entity, as you already know. And in here, we can add a component, which is uh, a light. So we'll add a little light in here. So we can add some more pizzazz to this torch, as you already probably know. Uh, we're gonna call it, we're gonna add maybe this color. And I'm gonna add another. This is kind of cool, right? <laughs> you just add stuff to stuff. It's fun. There we go. Now here's our two beautiful torches. Now you're probably wondering, um, there's no flames. You're probably like, ah, oh, you can't add flames, can you? Well, you can. You can add flames. So what we're gonna do is go back into our torches. We're gonna add entity and a new entity. Okay, I just very quickly renamed everything, so that makes sense. In flame, I'm gonna flame one first. Or you can probably select both. I can't select both. I tried. <laughs> I tried. You can't do that. Um, we can move the thing over here if you want. Then we're gonna do particle system. Now in here, what we wanna do is you wanna find torch. It's probably a torch effect. Boom. Here we go. And now 
I'm gonna put it here. That'll be a torch effect. Now you probably can't see it because you know you. I don't know. I don't know why you can't see it. But um, if I put it in game, you should be able to see it. And then in flame two, what we're gonna do? We're gonna do the exact same thing. And we're going to add a component, a particle system component, and it's gonna be torch. We save our changes, and now we go out. Now into our game, we go content browser, we go drag out our house, and we look at that. We now have a beautiful house with two torch particle effects. Oh my god, this is so cool. Oh, I love this so much. And uh, you can also, just like those things, you can add multiple houses, uh, rotate them if you want, we'll put one over here, uh, do this, whatever, however you like. And once you have all your houses around, uh, boom. Now what we can do with all of these houses now, uh, let's say if I, in this house, I only wanted one torch. What I can do is I can do this, uh, the outliner, I'll just delete all these. Boom, this house only will have one torch, and the barrel will be on this side of the room. Uh, what we also want in this one, I want no bed. I kind of want this barrel to be like, you know, the centerpiece of this house. And then in this one, I want um, this to be the same. Now let's say if I went to this one again, and I said, hmm, I want uh, this roof not to be here. What I can do, I can move my roof. Let's have one in the roof there for some reason. Now, if I save this and go out, as you can see, our roof has moved. But it hasn't moved in these, because remember the bug, but uh, they should have moved in those if I were to, you know, break another one out, as you can see. But uh, anyways, you can probably tell how cool this is. And now, this doesn't apply to houses, okay? You can do it with anything, really. You do it with, um, well, not anything right now, but later on, it will do with anything. They'll be adding creative devices to this. They'll be adding, um, so much things. And if you didn't know, all of these three houses take up the exact same memory cost. So I can have as many houses as I like. I mean, not as many. There's a limit, but it'll take up a fraction of what I would normally would if I were to make these all in individually without scene graph. So, oh my God, it's probably one of the best updates ever. So I hope you enjoyed the video. That's it. Um, I recommend looking at verse and how to use verse with this because you can do a lot of cool stuff with verse. You can you can move uh, you can move this. So if you wanted this sword to move up and down for some reason, you can do that. Another thing you can do with this is trees. Trees is another good idea. So like if you want to make foliage, you can make a, a foliage prefab. <laughs> do that but then you can like you can generate um i'm gonna i want to guess people are going to start making auto like you know in minecraft where you, structures will generate in the world you can do that now with this with using verse which is really cool so um i hope you enjoyed the video uh, that's about it um remember to like and subscribe use my code and also watch these videos if you want to see other ones that's about it this is one of the biggest things to a while i hope you enjoyed the video that's about it see you all around